The geometric mean of two numbers a and b is the value x that satisfies the following proportion. In other words, if we had two numbers, let's say 4 and 8, we could find their geometric mean by plugging them into this equation and solving for x. In order to solve for x, we would have to cross multiply and then simplify. And then to isolate x, we need to take the square root of both sides and we get x equals the square root of 32. Now, can we simplify this radical? The answer is yes, and that is because 32 has a factor that is a perfect square. 16 is the square of 4, so the square root of 16 is 4. In other words, to reduce this, it's 4 radical 2. And that means that the geometric mean of 4 and 8 is 4 radical 2. Now, do we always need to plug these numbers into this equation? The answer is no. If you always plug them in, you would find the right answer, but there is a simplified version. And this simplified version of this equation can be found by cross-multiplying prior to put, plugging any numbers in. So if we cross-multiply, we get a times b equals x times x. And then to isolate x, we take the square root of both sides, and we get x equals the square root of ab. In other words, the geometric mean of any two numbers is the square root of their product. So let's do a little example problem. What is the geometric mean of three and six? Well, if we use this equation that we see up here, we know that the geometric mean is equal to the square root of the product of these two numbers, 3 times 6. To simplify this, we get the square root of 18. Does 18 have a perfect square factor? Absolutely. And then we get square root of 9, and we leave the radical in there, and we know that the geometric mean is equal to 3 radical 2. Now, now that we know how to solve for the geometric mean, is there a use for it? And the answer is, in geometry, absolutely. And the use for the geometric mean becomes very clear as we work with right triangles. And I know this is a funky way to draw a right triangle. However, it's a very useful way if we talk about its altitude. And if you remember, the altitude of any triangle is when we take the vertex and we connect it to the other side with a segment that is perpendicular to the other side. And for a right triangle, the really is only one altitude that is not a side of the triangle. Because if we connected this vertex to this side in a perpendicular way, we would actually have the leg. Same thing here it would be this leg, because it's also perpendicular. So the only altitude that's not a side is this one that I'm drawing here. When I draw this altitude, what I've done is I've now constructed one two, and then the big black triangles, the third triangle, three right triangles. And these three right triangles happen to be similar. How do I know that they're similar? Well, let's take a look at the left triangle. Let's call the two acute angles in this left triangle. Let's call them basically one and two. We can call them one and two. These two, tri these two angles are complementary because the acute angles in any right triangle are complementary. 
And then if you look up here, if this whole angle is 90 degrees, that means that this angle and this angle are also complementary. And as we know through the complementary angle congruence theorem, is that if this is congruent to this and this is congruent to this, I'm sorry, if this is complementary to this and this is complementary to this, then these two angles must be congruent. In other words, let's say this was 20, that would make this 70, and this would have to be 20. So these two angles are actually congruent. We can call this one 1. And these two are also complementary, so this one happens to also be angle number 2. So here we have a whole bunch of different angles that are the same. And as we know, all we need are two angles to be the same in order to say that two triangles are similar. So this triangle over here is similar to this triangle, is also similar to the big triangle. And by using this, what we can do is talk about the relationship between the altitude of this triangle and these two segments. So first of all, let's talk about the altitude of any right triangle. cuts the hypotenuse into two pieces. A and B. Here's A and here's B. And let's see what the relationship is between A and B and X here. And to do this, we have to pick an angle. So I'm going to pick angle number two here. And in this triangle, the opposite leg to 2 is A. So let's talk about opposite versus adjacent. So the opposite leg is A. The adjacent leg is X. Now if we go over here and we look at angle 2, what is opposite 2? Well, it's X, and the adjacent leg is B. So we can set up this proportion because as we know the sides of any similar triangles are all in proportion provided that you're using the same angle. So here we're using angle 2 and here we're using angle 2. So take a look at this equation. Does it look familiar? And the answer is yes. It is very familiar. This is the geometric mean equation. So basically what that means is that the altitude of any right triangle is the geometric mean of these two pieces. So in other words, the altitude of a right triangle cuts the hypotenuse into two pieces, A and B, and the altitude is the geometric mean of these two pieces. In other words, if I had a right triangle and I wanted to find the altitude and I knew that this was 3 and this was 6, I could solve for the altitude by saying that it is the square root of the product of these two pieces, which means it's the square root of 18, or it is 3 radical 2.